Howdy everyone, hope you're doing well. Recently I did a composition in Sibelius and I went to use the octave up and octave down uh, clefs and I realized that it doesn't actually play back in Sibelius. After a bit of digging online I did end up finding resolution and I just thought I'd make a quick video to share with you guys how I did that. So let's get started. So I've pulled up Sibelius here and I've added two bars of crotchets on middle C. Now, what the aim of what we're trying to do here is, here it's not so bad, but let's say for example that, let's move this up two octaves. Now, you know, that's not too bad for a musician to read, but let's say, I don't know, you're really up there in the higher range and whatever. It, it becomes hard for a musician to be able to sight read this especially. Um, and so this is where the octave higher uh, clefs come in. Um, basically what we're going to do is, we're going to be playing these notes up here, but it's going to be represented further down. And it makes it much easier to sight read like this. So, let's add our crotchets back into this bar. We want these crotchets to be played as if they're up here. Now, we can also do it as if it was here, but for this demonstration, we want them up here. So, if I was to go in and add the clef in, now in this situation it would be two octaves higher, so it would be treble up at 15, we add this here. I'm then going to play that back in Sibelius so you can hear what Sibelius does. It does absolutely nothing. Sibelius does not play this back as it appears, it plays it as if this was not here at all, which we don't want. So, how do we do it? For the way that I do things, we don't need the clef to be put in there, it's going to automatically do it for us. Now, to do this, it's going to sound a little bit weird, but we need to create a new instrument. Now, when I say that, it's going to be exactly the same as this piano here. There's just going to be one change to it that is going to influence the sound that it plays of the notes. So, to do this, we're going to go into the home page. And we're going to click this little icon here, which is to edit instruments. Now this will pull up a page that shows you all the instruments in Sibelius. Any changes made here are for this score only. So if you're trying to add this to a score that you've already got, you know, 200 and something bars for, look, what I would say is maybe create just, you know, a new blank one so you can test it first, make sure you understand how this works, and then go and implement it into your major score. Just because any, say, any changes here will only be saved for that score, and if you remove something, you know, I, I, honestly, I don't really know how to get it back without creating the score again, okay? So, for my demonstration, I'm using the piano. As you can see, it's already selected because it's the instrument that I was last using. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new instrument. It's going to say, do you want to create a new instrument based off the instrument you've selected, in this case, the piano? Yes, we do. It's going to pull up all the data for the instrument that you've selected. And so what we want to change first is we want to change the dialogue name so that it shows up as a different piano. Otherwise, it's going to be indistinguishable and it's going to be very frustrating. Um, short name in the score. Remove these two at the bottom because we don't want it to say when the instrument's changed. Otherwise, it's just going to be confusing for the person reading it. This is just for Sibelius. Now, here's what I do. I change this to one stave. Even if it is a two stave instrument, I change it to one stave. So that way I can treat both the bass and the treble clef separately. The next important thing, and this is what's going to add in our clef automatically is we're going to go to sounding pitch clef and we're going to change this now in my demonstration mine's going to be 15 because we're going two octaves higher but if you're looking for one octave higher it'd be the eight right here so i'm going to select that now this is the part that is going to change how it sounds so for a non-transposing score and a transposing score there's two separate options but right now the sound is designed around middle c but we don't want um middle C to be played back at middle C. No. For one octave higher, we'd want to switch this to five. For two octaves higher, we'd want to set it to six. This is telling Sibelius that when you set a note on middle C in Sibelius, so when you go back in here and you put it on a safe in C, it's going to play back two, two octaves higher in this situation. Now, whatever you do in a non-transposing score, you need to do in a transposing score as well, because if you don't do this, what's going to end up happening is as soon as you click this button up here in Sibelius, it's going to undo what you've just done. So 
we select this to our two octaves higher and we select this to our two octaves higher. The best sound is already the best sound and we're good to go. Perfect. So now we got to select it. So mine was put under the category of pitch percussion, which is where the piano would be. And I'm going to go to the piano test and voila, there's all our changes there. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and change it. Now watch what happens when I change this instrument. Um, I'm going to select the piano test. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want it to announce the, announce the previous instrument. And you'll see that as soon as I did that, holy crap, it just went two octaves down. And that's good. That's telling me that the change has happened. All I need to do and is to raise the octave up to where I want it. So on a Windows computer that's holding control and using the up and down arrows, on a Mac I believe it's command and up and down arrows, so two octaves higher. And you would have heard it just play back then. Now, written exactly the same, and if I go and play this back, perfect, that's exactly what we want. So now what is written on the stave is replicated in the playback. Now, you could keep this for however many bars you want, but at some point you're inevitably, well, more than likely going to want to return or at least know how to. Very simple. Um, this, however, if you do need to go back down, will require a subtle change in Sibelius to add an instrument. The reason for that is because if we do try and just go back here, you'll see it announces piano. If I try to remove it, it goes back to being the old instrument again, and so it has no effect. So what we actually need to do here is we need to edit the actual piano instrument in here. And it's gonna tell you that you're editing an instrument that is in your score, which we know. And we're just gonna remove the change name. Now, if we go back and we go to change instrument and we change it back to the piano, wah, not there. And we add it back here. And you can see here it's removed it. I bring it two octaves down and voila, we are done. Perfect. All right, so that's pretty much it. I just want to say two quick things. One, if anyone knows how to save this so it goes across all your projects, that'd be freaking awesome. Please let me know. Two, if anyone has a better way of doing this, please let me know as well. Um, it's all about helping each other out. This is the way that I found online with a slight little bit of changes for the way that I do things. Um, but if you've got a way that works better, please, please leave a comment and let me know. Other than that, have a great day and I hope you enjoy.